My name is Doug Holdreed. This PowerPoint is designed to accompany Exploring Art, a Global Thematic Approach, Chapter 5, Who Makes Art? Art happens within a social context. Artists operate within the, the society, within the, the culture that they live in. And it's not just the artist that makes art happen. There are teachers and manufacturers. There are different people that support the whole process. And even leaders and governmental uh, institutions have something to do with, with the production of art. The Great Pyramids of Giza in Egypt are a good example of a work of art that has to be understood in its cultural um, context. It was uh, created, the pyramids were created as tombs for the pharaohs. And of course the pharaohs were individuals, but the uh, pyramids also served to reinforce the idea, the social concept of the pharaoh as not just a human being, but as a god, as the incarnation of, of the god Horus. Artists become artists in different ways at different times in history and in and, uh, different social contexts. This is a painting by the artist Veraccio. It uh, so happens that Veraccio had uh, a studio with lots of apprentices working in it. Uh, apprentices were generally young boys with talent who came to work under a master. In this case, one of the apprentices was a talented young man named Leonardo da Vinci who painted the angel um, that we see on the left. So that's one of the things we'll be looking at in this chapter, just how people become artists. Prior to the Renaissance period, uh, during the Middle Ages or the medieval period, guilds developed in Europe. After the Renaissance, official art academies, which were institutions of governments in Europe were the place that uh, people generally learned how to be artists. In the um, apprenticeship system, young artists work under the direction of a master, and often these young artists will do a lot of the rough work while the master applies the finishing touches. This sculpture piece from the Yoruba culture in Africa is an example of that. The, um, the young workers um, do the, the rough um, work while the master does the uh, final sharp cutting, um, the, the finishing touches. During the Middle Ages, guilds were formed. These were sort of like unions where um, artists, skilled workers, stone masons and so forth banded together to learn from each other, to support each other and to make sure that um, the members of the guild were, were treated fairly by their employers. This is the Palace of Versailles, um, a, a project that was promoted by uh, King Louis XIV um, of France. Um, and it was, it's an example of how the academy system came to be and, and was applied in, in France. Uh, the academies were official government-run um, institutions that decided what kind of art was acceptable and which artists could practice um, their, their creative um, endeavors. Today in the United States, artists are trained in universities and, and they acquire degrees, uh, masters of fine art degrees. But of course, some artists are not trained. They're self-taught. Uh, we call these kinds of artists naive artists or, um, or outsider um, artists or folk artists. Um, these towers, the Watts Towers, are an example of works of art that were created by someone who was not trained um, in, a, in a university. Peter Paul Rubin had a huge studio with hundreds of assistants or apprentices helping him to produce these very, very large canvases. 
And again, the apprentices would um, basically do the grunt work. They would lay in large areas of underpainting, and, and then Rubens, the master, would come in and, and do the finishing details. So while some works of art are the creative uh, expression of an individual artist, and some works of art are um, done by the artist with lots of help from his apprentices or assistants. Some works of art are really community art projects that carry with them a lot of um, social pride and social involvement, like Chartres Cathedral from the Middle Ages, or this piece um, that was done um, in, in China and um, is a huge sculpture project that involved and necessitated the work of, of many, many um, sculptors to complete it. Among the Hindu people on the island of Bali in Indonesia, almost everything is art, and almost everyone is an artist. The art is really very integrated with the, um, the religion and the social institutions, and, and it's all sort of part of, of the culture and the lifestyle of of the people um, of that island. This is the AIDS memorial quilt. Um, this is obviously a, a view of the, um, the mall in front of the Capitol building in Washington DC. Um, in the picture these quilts which were created by ordinary people to commemorate their loved ones who had, had died uh, as a result of AIDS and it's a it's a remembrance it's a a work of art that has a lot of meaning and significance within its its social context this piece is titled spiral jetty by the artist robert smithson it's um, a work of art a geoglyph um, an earth form that was created out in in a body of water and it required the assistance of, of course, some heavy equipment operators to, uh, to create this thing. I included this slide because it's something that's going on right here where we live. Um, this is the artist Christo, and he has proposed stretching a, a, a curtain across, the, um, across the, the gorge of the Arkansas River um, west of Pueblo, west of, of Canyon City. So the role of the artist is different uh, in different cultures and it's been different at different times in history. In some cultures there's a gender specificness to art. Men do one kind of art while women do another. There have been in history times when the artist was primarily a, a, a holy person or a scientist. Uh, during the Renaissance, the artist became a creative genius. And there have been times when the making of art was identified with the ruler, with, with the chief or some important person in the social structure. In the Middle Ages, artists were thought of as manual laborers, skilled workers who knew how to do something with their hands that not everybody could do. It wasn't cool for an artist back then to um, make a big deal out of the fact that they had done the artwork. Artists generally remained anonymous. One big exception to that was a guy named Gisli Bertus, um, a sculptor who worked on this um, work that we see here on the Autun Cathedral in France. Um, he had a unique style but the most unique thing about him was that he named himself. This piece is signed, um, Gisli Bertus did this. A good example of an artist who was also a scientist is Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo used his art as a way to, to study, to explore and record what he observed in nature and the things that his um, scientifically creative mind came up with. 